is going on everybody? My name is Northy, and today we are back with another pre round review. Almost messed it up immediately. <laughs> We are here with a round review for uh, round, no sorry, round review, round preview for round 17. My goodness, I don't think I could have messed up an intro as bad as I just did. But as you can see here, the time for round eight, round 17 locking in is already up. However, this time I made sure I was on top of things. So everything is set up for a big, big week. And hopefully you guys will uh, get to uh, see what happens here. Uh, with all my star powers and top teams, but I'm confident so far. The start of the week so far has been pretty good. Uh, the Thursday night game, the Melbourne versus Port Adelaide one, uh, went well for me in terms of uh, star powers and top team. I don't think it really, I don't think it affected my star powers at all. But uh, my top team def definitely did well for it, and my uh, tips not so well for it. But as per usual, we go from star powers to top team to tips. I've already done my tips. Thankfully, so you guys will be able to um, properly get a gauge of that. But we go to star powers right here. This is what I've got at the moment. Managed to pick myself up a green Ben Cunnington. You'll find out why soon. But I'm using him as my super because I like the way he played against the dogs last week. So I can only imagine he's going to pull out something good this coming week. He's been playing really, really well this season. So I'm hoping he manages to get some good uh, numbers in his game against West Coast. Uh, if there's any week to do it, it's this week. Uh, but we finally switched up the mega. I've remembered to do so. We've got Mega Brody Grundy in there. Um, Max Gorn had a pretty decent game uh, last night. So, I mean, if I had him at the Mega, I'd probably use him. But I do not. Uh, my other Megas were Paddy Cripps and Todd Goldstein. I am not confident at all. All <laughs> having that many uh, mega, uh, sorry, that many North Melbourne players in my star powers, but I've got two. I've got two in here at the moment. Taron Thomas has been playing really, really well as of late. 24 disposals, I believe, was a career high for him, so he did really well. Um, and obviously, the rest of them, uh, yeah, they did their regular thing. It's very hard to find good rising players. Rising is the toughest. I believe that super is the best, you get the most out of all the super. Uh, I've got Clayton Oliver, Josh Kelly, and Ben Cunnington at the moment. Those two, those three, sorry, help me out tremendously. And my legend always kind of swaps between certain people here and there. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Joel Selwood, uh, Scott Pendlebury, and Jack Siebel are, for the most part, the ones I kind of switch between at the moment. But Riley O'Brien is in there at my future position right now. Uh, I believe he plays Ruckman sometimes, if I'm correct. He got 36 headouts, and Ruckman are, for the most part, some of the most consistent ones you can get points from. So I put Riley O'Brien in there to see if he can have another game like it. If Hugh McCluggage comes out and plays amazingly, I won't know what to do. He's been he's been having a little bit of a, a tough stretch as of late. So having Riley O'Brien in there should be a nice refresher, a good ruckman to hopefully get us some good points for this weekend. Obviously not quite in the top 100 last time, but let's uh, sorry in the top 10 uh, in the not in top 100, I'm right, <laughs> in the top 100 last time, but uh, hopefully in the uh, top 100 this coming week, and I have a good feeling that we will. I'm really confident with this week's uh, teams. I think I've made the right choices here and there to do the best things for us. Now we go to our top teams. Uh, as you can see here, biggest changes are my Ruckman and Midfielder. Midfielder originally was uh, Tooth Miller. He hasn't been playing bad at all. But Jack Steele has been playing really, really, really well as of late. The tackles he gets in games, uh, the, the amount of tackles he gets even are just huge. He's always on the ball. He's doing big things all season. Uh, and so I've put him in there. Roy Ladd has been probably one of the most consistent backmen this season. So I'm, I'm still happy to keep him in at, my, at that position. But Christian Salem, I put him into my top 18 team. I didn't put him into my top four. That may be a mistake. I'm not too sure just yet, but I'm sticking with Rory Laird. I don't think Christian got 100 points, but he got very close. I'm almost certain he got very close. He had a good game, though. And then, as always, Marcus Bontempelli. He's been playing awesome all year. Uh, not in a 100-point game last time. Paddy managed to beat him by a fair bit last time, but I am still confident that uh, Bonts can do some big things. He didn't kick a goal at all in that last game, which even one would have put him a little bit closer. And as everyone knows, if you watched the video last week, the review for round 16, you can see right here, I came 27. So a change up in a goal, uh, just some small things here, here and there. A, a goal, a hit out, literally anything. Anything extra would have put me over. So, hopefully these guys can be clutch for me. Our uh, aim for top four is always 400. It'd be nice if one of them can go over that 100 mark, making it a bit easier for me. That's why I'm a little bit annoyed. 
I've never really thought about putting Christian Petrarca in there, but I guarantee you Petrarca had over 100 last night. So anyone who's got them, anyone who's got Petrarca in their midfielders is definitely going to be very happy. But this is my top four. Uh, Brody Grundy, I switched out. I, sw I put him in for Max Gorn, and Max Gorn went out and played a really, really good game. So I'm hoping I haven't made a mistake there, but... There's not much I can really do. I've got to just hope that Brody Grundy can be a good all-round player uh, um, this weekend. I can't remember when he's playing. Oh, these these Thursday through Monday week uh, weeks are just messing with me, but I do love my football. So uh, hopefully it'll just mean I get more time to watch every single game this season. We'll see what happens, but I'm confident this team can do big things. No one has played just yet, so I won't know whether I've made any mistakes or good choices very soon. Oh, for, at least for a while, sorry. So we'll see what happens. But my top 18 is looking like this. I think it's looking a lot more like solid than it's ever looked before. Christian Salem went out and played an awesome game. I believe yeah, AFL Fantasy had about 108 points. So I don't know how many that translate to, translates to in team coach. But I am very happy with his performance. Very, very happy. I can't remember who else played. We had Melbourne. Uh, yeah, Melbourne and Port Adelaide. Ollie Wines. Ollie Wines had a pretty decent game as well. He and Christian Salem had about the same kind of game. I think Ollie was just a little bit worse. But I've had Ollie Wines in there because he's been playing games just out of his mind some nights. It's been ridiculous. Didn't come this week, but I think he played a solid enough game to still keep us in reach of a top 10 spot. Obviously, last week, 35. It hurt. It hurt a lot. We're still trying to keep that top 100 position, but um, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, some good things uh, still do come from this team because the big changes, Paddy Dangerfield's in. Uh, I, re I originally had Jordan Degoe at that position, but I just wasn't confident in having him there. I was worried he's going to drop off at some point. But Tom Hawkins is in there. I don't know whether Jordan Dugowie is playing as an on-ball player. If he is, I may have made a mistake. But Tom Hawkins kicked six last week. And he's on a little bit of a roll right now. So I'm expecting these two to do some big things for me. Lance Franklin is just going to get sorted out. I think a lot of Sydney players, uh, they don't over-rely on Lance. Uh, I think Lance has done a really, really good job at you know adjusting to the fact that as his age goes up, he's not going to be sought out as much. And as the younger players start to rise around him, um, he is going to have to play it back foot at some point. But Lance Franklin has been kicking a lot of goals. And uh, he definitely hasn't been playing poorly at all. Last week, 74 points. That's not bad for Lance. That's not bad at all for Lance Franklin. And as you can see right here, compared to other forwards, we did he did pretty well. Uh, so yeah, we've got him in there. Um, I think, yeah, just Tom Hawkins, Paddy Dangerfield, Ollie Wines. Yes, yeah, Salem was the other change. Those pretty much were the only changes in the team, uh, mainly around the midfield um, and the forward line. Like, one change in the midfield, but I think out of everything I've done this year, this has probably been the weirdest one I've done, I think. Because, like, all these players on good nights can go off. They can have games going 150 AFL fantasy points, doing crazy things. Jack McRae, he's just a consistent 30, so he's always one of the safe ones. If you do have him, put him in. He's going to know what he's doing. Paddy Dangerfield had a really good game, and he's just an on-ball player, so I'm a lot more confident putting him in over anyone else now that he's back to his back to his form, unless he gets injured, which will just be heartbreaking because you really can't afford in this game mode to have a single person go down. Uh, both top four and top 18. So hopefully this weekend is good for me in terms of top team. But from there, of course, we go to the tips. And I managed to actually get my tips in this time. Uh, as you can see here, I don't have the tips up anymore, which is a little bit frustrating. So I will go over to AFL. You can see right here, uh, Melbourne versus Port Adelaide. I think I tipped Port Adelaide. I thought they were going to get it because it was at Adelaide, wasn't it? It was Adelaide Oval. So I thought that uh, Port Adelaide were going to get it or they had a chance to get it. But yeah, Melbourne just did their weird thing of playing poorly against teams they should beat and smashing all the top four teams. I, th I think they've been... Re I, th I can't remember if they've been consistently uh, destroying top level teams. Like the dogs they just destroyed. Um, Port Adelaide, they've beaten by 30. Geelong, they beat pretty convincingly. Uh, Brisbane, yeah, they beat them after, after a really slow start. But that's just the Melbourne special. Melbourne just takes their time to get used to you. If, if they're not doing it in the first half, they're definitely doing it in the second half. This team is able to run over the top of you over and over again, week in and week out. This Melbourne team, I think, is legit. 
pretty legit. But um, yeah, Melbourne doing big things there. Uh, then we go to Essendon versus Adelaide tonight at Marvel Stadium. I'm pretty sure I tipped Essendon. Uh, I'm pretty certain that's a good choice. Adelaide, I don't know, maybe they could pull something out, but Essendon have been pretty consistently good. Jake Stringer has been playing really, really well as of late. Of course, you've got Darcy Parrish. Um, you've got players like that. Um, I'm trying to think of who else is also... Yeah, just Jake Stringer and Darcy Parrish, I think, have been the two most, you know, out, the biggest ones so far. Um, one of the old top team players I had on my team, Dyson Heppel. Uh, I've got, I haven't got him in the team this week. So it's interesting to see how he'll play tonight. But it's a, it's, it's a fully up in the air. I do not know how it's going to go. I, I'm pretty certain. I, or I'm pretty hopeful, however, that it will be Essendon. I'm thinking so. But then we go down to Saturday games. There's only three this Saturday. And then three on Sunday. And then the one on Monday. I don't know why they put a Monday game. But all right. Uh, Saturday, we've got Hawthorne versus Fremantle. I want Fremantle, win, to, to, Fremantle to win desperately because I need North Melbourne to really make a move now to try and get off the bottom spot. But uh, we'll see how it all goes because North Melbourne, there's been times where they look really decent and against the Dogs, they did look pretty good. But uh, I don't know whether they have it in them to properly win games consistently just yet. And I'm hoping that changes very soon. But Hawthorne, I'm hoping they lose to Fremantle. It is in Tasmania, which is a home game for Hawthorne. But, obviously, uh, Hawthorne's play so far this season hasn't been top-notch. So, Fremantle, I'm going to presume they take it over Hawthorne. But, maybe Hawthorne shocks us. We don't know just yet. We've got a Carlton versus Geelong. A lot resting on this game. Uh, I'm pretty sure Geelong's going to take it. I need Paddy to play well. And I need Tom Hawkins to play well. I need those two to do big things for me. I also need uh, Tom Mitchell to do big things for me for Hawthorne versus Fremantle. So, let's hope those guys do well. Uh, but, yeah, Geelong, I'm, I'm pretty sure, certain I picked Geelong over, uh, over Carlton. Uh, just purely a skill thing at this point. I think Carlton, they, they're probably one of the ugliest teams to watch right now. Purely because of the games they're winning. Maybe not against Fremantle. Fremantle, I'm almost certain they had a pretty decent game. There were some really good passages to play against Fremantle. But I am not always so keen to be watching Carlton as of late. Then we go to Brisbane versus St. Kilda. Uh, tipped Brisbane Forum. Is that Metricon Stadium in Queensland? Uh, Brisbane home game. I'm going to presume that Brisbane is taking home the the win. Uh, yeah, Saints just pretty disappointing this season. How after last season, a finals win, you can't even crack the top 10. It's, it's getting sad now, but I think Brisbane's going to take it. If Saints do manage to take it from Brisbane, then maybe my opinion changes. But I'm pretty certain... This is going to be a Brisbane win. Then we go to the Giants versus the Suns. I feel like this entire game rests on how the Giants play. I do not think... I think the Suns should... The Suns will just rock up. We'll see how they go. But I think this is purely after how the Giants play. It's a game in Victoria. So it's a very, very weird one. The two most recent expansion teams up against each other. One with a bit more success, for, success than the other in a completely different state. It's going to be very, very weird. But I think Giants are going to take this one home. I think there's a little bit of leniency you can give them. But man, the Giants on their bad days are horrible. And on their good days are really, really good. As we've seen this season from their wins against Melbourne. But their loss against Hawthorne. Just a confusing team. This one I'm excited for, the Dogs versus the Swans. I'm pretty certain I picked the Dogs, but I could see the Swans taking it from them. I really could. This Swans team has been really, really interesting this season. I've liked how they've played a lot compared to last season. I would like to see this be a really, really competitive one at Marvel Stadium. But then we go to Richmond versus Collingwood. Richmond, Collingwood, both teams having a really disappointing season so far. If there is anything right in this world, Richmond will take this. I think purely because they kind of need to. And if you, we were taking this as a, you know, start of the season kind of game, you'd expect Richmond to take it, right? But you just don't know. Richmond's heads are so far down the drain, it's unreal. And Collingwood may try and pick them off. They may do it. Who knows? But it's going to be very, very interesting. And then we go to the Monday, uh, Monday game, North versus West Coast. I've got to wait until Monday to watch my team play at 7.40. All right, no worries, I, I guess. Just a very weird one, but uh, I tipped North. <laughs> 
after their 92 point thrashing against the, uh, against the Swans. West Coast are probably looking to really try and flip it around, but North has played all right as a late. I think they're definitely feeling a lot better than the Eagles are right now, uh, because North expectations are definitely a lot lower than, than the Eagles right now, but oh man, I need North to take this one. Please, North, please do it. <laughs> it's in WA, so if anything is, anything is right in the world, West Coast will take this, but... Come on, North. You can do it. I believe. But that is my preview for round 17 of the AFL 2021 season. Uh, yeah, as everyone knows, uh, on Thursday, uh, the Demons took out the uh, power. That's it. The Demons took out the power. So, I'm already kind of a little bit late, but Thursday night games don't count. <laughs> they don't count. Yeah, unless North's playing in them, they don't count. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think this week will go well for me. I'm hoping it does if everyone plays up to their standard. So, I appreciate every single one of you who tuned into this video. Uh, if you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Thank you all so much for 200 subscribers. It's a big thing uh, seeing all the uh, enjoyment and the entertainment that you guys are getting from my videos. It means the world. It's, a ve it's very, very nice to see people um, enjoying it, leaving nice comments. Everything is always very, very much appreciated. And I will catch you all in the next video. Maybe a review, maybe another video. We do not know just yet, but I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.